In this episode, we're going to be going over the Caterpillar um, topic, talking about 10% error in the solution. And I read this back in the last episode. But what Caterpillar is talking about here is that there's at least 10% error in fuel in stationary fuel. I have some, some several problems with this, but we're going to tie it all together. Let's read the first bullet point, number two, back here after that. It says, when the fuel is very slightly effervescent, well, I don't know what that means exactly, there is no detrimental effect to the performance of the engine. Often this condition is normal. The fuel line pressure between the tank and the transfer pump is slightly below atmospheric pressure. Are you at sea level? Are you at 11,158 feet on the top of I-70 just west of Denver? So some of the dissolved air comes out of solution. Transfer pump pressure will force the air into solution, makes it magically disappear. Oh, okay, I added that, sorry. Before the injection pumps are filled, or the bypass line will return it to the tank. Let's go with that last little bit. That air bubble is traveling down the rail. We have an injector over here where we're gonna to get torched. No, I don't wanna go down that way. I wanna go back to the fuel tank. No. It's going to go to the fuel tank or it's going to go to the injector, okay? We don't know where it's going to go, okay? And talking about flow rates going down the rail, you take an old B or C model cat, they call it, for, I think, three to five inches of restriction on the filter, the number 10 line flowing 21 gallons an hour. It's going to go back to the tank and agitate a little bit. You take a new DD-15, we're putting 290 gallon power systems on there to keep it at the flow rate, same size line, and they're calling for, I don't know, even know what the inches of restriction that they're calling on that one, but the other engines are calling for seven to nine inches of restriction on a clean filter. Are they just tolerating this? Because in the test cell, they happen to have the stationary fuel. Probably has a 10% air and fuel that they're talking about because at the test cell, the fuel tank's up, up in the air, 15, 20, 25 feet. It's stationary. It's gravity feeding the engine. And then that return fuel, of the old engines, 21 gallons an hour, whatever is not being uh, burned, is going back to the tank. Not in the test cell, though. It's going back to it. It's contaminating a, a, a separate tank. It's not contaminating a supply tank. You take that engine that needs a high flow pump. It's, you know, on a truck, it's going in contaminating the supply tank, but not in the test cell. So the 10% air and fuel, and they're saying it's not hurting it, is, is that because in the test cell they're tolerating it? And then if you go to the next one, if the fuel begins to appear white and foamy, what's your white and foamy versus my white and foamy? Excessive air is entering the system and causing agitation. This condition affects the engine performance up and power loss up to three and a half percent. Another big question, is it 1% or is it 40%? And then you go to the next one, larger bubbles appear, a large amount of air is entering the system. <laughs> okay, Mr. Obvious. With this condition, power loss is up to 9%. Is that it? Just it stops at 9%? Can occur even if the engine runs smoothly. What's a big bubble to you? Okay, you and I have different opinions on big bubbles. But if we put enough big bubbles in the fuel line, will it not shut down the engine? But here it only says I can put a lot, of, a lot of big air bubbles in and it'll only hurt it up to 9%. Fuel, because of Biden, 550 a gallon, whatever it is now, we can run mostly air and the engine will run. This this just does not just does not add, up, not add up to me at all. But they're saying at least 10% error in solution when it's stationary, okay? But then you have agitation and all the character changes here. But let's go back to atmospheric pressure. Are we talking sea level? Because we have 14.7 PSI at sea level. That's that pressure pushing down on the fuel to help bring it up. But if we go to 10,000 feet, and remember I-70 on the west side of Denver goes 11,158 feet. So a little bit uh, higher than what we're gonna quote, but at 10,000 feet, we lose 4.6 pounds of pressure pushing down on the fuel and we drop to 10.1 PSI. We lose, what, 35-ish percent of the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the fuel, so we have to increase vacuum. Well, what does increased vacuum do? Uh, what does it create on a dirty filter? a loss in performance and more damage to our injection system, which we'll show later. So this is why you lose performance when you go into higher altitudes. One reason is, is because of the fuel, the vacuum and the vapor and all that, okay? The other reason is, and we can't help you out with this, is atmospheric pressure going in through your turbo, your supercharger, or your naturally aspirated engine, but I don't see naturally aspirated diesel, so 
that's the problem that I have with some of this stuff. We're going to use these other articles from Fortune 500 companies to offset this and also agree with the portions I agree with. Okay? So the next article will be covering the common service topic and balancing it with the Caterpillar topic. And we'll go out in a working environment and none of our trucks are here in the test cell. So the next episode is the common service topic balanced with the cat.